This video is brought to you by Avoto, a professional AI photo editor that allows you to perform routine tasks quickly and then sync your edits to other photos in just seconds. For the last five years, I've been using an optical snoot to spice up my work, like this one. This specialty modifier allows me to project light with a lens onto any surface. In addition, you can place a metal stencil, commonly known as a gobo, which stands for go-between, between the light, well, I better get it in here, between the light, which goes back here, and the lens. And this allows you to project a focused or defocused shadow from the gobo onto a model or your background. These are often used with flash, but you can use them with LEDs as well. In this video today, I'm going to introduce you to these modifiers, tell you where you can buy them, and then I'll share with you four ways that you can use them on your next photo shoot as I break down nine lighting setups with both flash and constant light. My understanding is that the major brands, including Profoto and Elinchrome, made these modifiers in the past and then discontinued them, and then generic manufacturers in countries like China started making them and selling them under different brand names. Then companies like Westcott and Paul C. Buff started selling them as well. I haven't used these specific units, but I wouldn't expect them to greatly outperform the generic offerings on Amazon, which I have used. You can find them there with all sorts of names, but it looks like someone's just taking the same modifier and placing a different sticker on it and selling it under a different name. If you've used these name brand ones and the generic ones, please let us know in the comments below if you felt that one was better than the other and why. In 2019, I purchased a nice photo SN29 optical snoot on Amazon. But after a lot of traveling, the lens started to develop chromatic aberration, so I bought this one, which also has blades, that lets you define the shape of the projection. These units typically come in a Bowens mount, but if you don't own lights with a Bowens mount, you can buy a ring like this one back here that matches your brand of lights and the dimensions of the Bowens ring that comes on the snoot when you buy it. I'm gonna show you how quickly and easily it is to swap this out. I'm just gonna remove this one screw here and I'll set that aside and then this is the ring that matches Elinchrome and it's 135 millimeters in diameter and I just bought this ring on eBay or Amazon that was 135 millimeters and matched um, Elinchrome. I just searched for Elinchrome ring 135 millimeters and you can find them on there pretty easily and they're about 15 or so dollars and then of course all I had to do was remove that one screw. Um, I had to loosen those others a little bit but then all you do is slide it on here, grab your screw, um, put it back on. So if you buy the one with the Bowens mount you're just going to take the screw off, you're going to take the Bowens thing off, you're going to grab the one that matches your flash, slide it on here, screw it into place, and you're done. Now, if you don't want to deal with these screws, I don't know why you wouldn't, but let's say you don't, you can just get simply an adapter that goes from Bowens to the brand that you use, and it's really easy, and those are very affordable as well. If flash isn't your thing, you could also get this Nanlite Forza 60C and a PJ FMM 36 optical snoot, which I started using last year, and it works great, but more on that a little bit later. If you want to support me to make more videos like this, please click on the links in the description and check out the gear that's there. Even if you don't buy that gear in particular, just clicking on the link and then buying something else will actually help support me as well. And also, if you could please support our sponsor, Avoto, that would be great too. Also, please like, subscribe, and sign up for the bell. These modifiers eat light, so you're probably going to want to use a 500 watt second flash at full power or the Forza 60C at full power in these modifiers. Even when I have all that power, I'm typically shooting at ISO 800 to get a little depth of field in my images. 
The only exception would be when I have the optical snoot really close to the subject. So I would strongly suggest that you don't try using one of these with a light that is less than 250 watt seconds if you're using flash or anything smaller than the Forza 60C if such a thing actually exists that goes on a snoot. I measured the exposure with the lights one meter or 40 inches away from my Sekonic 858 light meter. With an Elenchrome ELC 500 watt second flash at full power in both the generic optical snoots, the exposure was 1 200th at f16 and a third at ISO 400. With the Nanlite Forza 60C and a PJFMM36, the exposure was 1 200th of a second at f6.3 at ISO 400. So the flash unit is three stops brighter than the continuous light. However, you could use the Nanlite PJBM36 with a Forza 500, a 500 watt light, and presumably it would be as bright as the strobe. However, the snoot alone is huge and the light would probably be too bright to shine in a person's eyes. They would become very squinty and probably have a difficult time uh, maintaining their composure. Typically, when you use a flash at high power settings, the flash duration becomes quite long, and that's how long it takes for the light to come out of the flash and then trail off that period of time. And this will determine how frozen your images are in the studio. So I wouldn't suggest that you use this modifier to freeze extreme movement. If you wanna watch a video that's all about flash duration and understand how to use that in order to stop dancers and other subjects in motion, I will link to that here. If you're using continuous lights with an optical snoot, it's also likely that your resulting exposure would be one that would stop a model posing, but not a model jumping. So keep that in mind as well. If you use a flash with a traditional halogen modeling lamp, the modifier will get very hot very fast and it might overheat. Both of the flash oriented snoots that I have come with a Canon EF mount and neither one of them provides electricity to the lens. So you could use your own lens, but the problem with that is that you need to make sure that you have a full-time manual lens. Normally these are the cheapest ones that Canon offers and they allow you to focus the lens without having power going to it. So if you try to use one of the professional grade lenses, it's going to need electricity in order to focus and that's not going to work. So you'll need to use something like the Nifty 50 or those low end lenses where they took the motors out in order to make the lens cheaper. But I would just suggest that you buy an optical snoot with a lens already built in because then you won't have to use another lens from your kit. So that's something to keep in mind as well. The next thing you want to consider is the focal length of the lens on the optical snoot. If you use one with a telephoto lens, like an 85 millimeter, then you're likely going to have to put the snoot further away from your subject. And given the inverse square law, when you do so, the light will become effectively dimmer. Both of the flash oriented snoots that I have, they came with an equivalent 50 millimeter lens. One of them used actually a young Nuo Canon EF mount 50 millimeter, and the other one was just a generic all metal lens without really any markings. Neither one of them had chromatic aberration, which actually is very important when it comes to an optical snoot, because if you have purple or yellow fringing from the lens, that's going to show up in your photos uh, that you're taking. The all metal lens that I got came with the second snoot and it's not as sharp on the corners as the knockoff Nifty 50, if you will. But I don't think that's really a big deal because I don't sharply focus the projection most of the time. Usually I want it out of focus or knocked out of focus just a little bit. The Nanlite PJ FMM 36 has a 36 degree field of view, which I think is more like a 65 millimeter lens. They also have a 19 degree version as well. And as you can imagine, that's around a 135 millimeter lens. And once again, that's going to mean that you're probably going to have to put it further away from your subject. And given the inverse square law, when you move it further back, it's going to effectively become dimmer. And so that's not really a good thing. 
As for the gobos, you can buy a snoot with anywhere between 6 and 120 gobo options packaged together with the snoot and the lens. Most of the time, I create slits and triangles with the blades or use the circle or window or foliage gobos. There's another modifier too called just a plain snoot. These modifiers typically reduce the light into a small beam using a honeycomb grid, but they don't produce super sharp circles or use lenses to project shapes. For this shoot with Ethereo, I was inspired by some behind the scenes images that I saw from the French photo studio Harcourt. Old Hollywood style headshots like this were typically shot with continuous tungsten fresnels. So I knew that when I created this image with flash that I would use hard lights, including grid reflectors, an optical snoot, and a Bowens 200mm Fresnel modifier, which ironically I bought from someone in Paris on eBay. In addition, French physicist Augustin Jean Fresnel invented the Fresnel lens in the 1800s, so I guess we're having a little bit of a French theme day. A Fresnel collimates light rays and projects them forward in a beam. This technology was used widely in lighthouses and then later movie lights. This type of light is said to resemble sunlight, but it's more forgiving because from the model's perspective, it's going to be used close up and it will look a lot larger to them than the sun. In general, a larger source relative to the model will be a softer source. The sun is equivalent to a one centimeter or dime sized light around 20 meters away or 60 feet and the lens on the Fresnel modifier is 20 centimeters or 8 inches in diameter so you can quickly imagine how much bigger that's going to look to the subject and how uh, it's going to be less harsh than the actual sun. To light this scene I placed a window gobo in my nice photo SN29 and pointed it at the background from about 1 meter or 3 feet away. In retrospect I should have moved it further back in order to increase the size of the projection. The light from this light metered f4.5. Then I boomed another light with a grid reflector over the back part of the set and pointed it towards the camera. This hair light metered at f16. Next I placed a kicker on camera right and camera left with a 20 degree grid inside. These lights metered at around f11. Then I bounced another light with a grid reflector and a 30 degree grid off of a 1 meter or 3 foot silver reflector. Light from this modifier metered at f5.0. Finally, I placed a light with the Bowens 200mm Fresnel on camera right and the light from this light metered f7.1. Alternatively, you could replace this modifier with a grid reflector and a 10 degree or so grid. Then I set my camera to 1 200th of a second at f9 at ISO 100 and I photographed Ethereo with my Canon 28-70 to f2. Typically, I set my hair light and my edge lights to be about one to two stops darker than my main light, and that's because at that time I'm trying to simulate window light. But when I'm doing something like these old Hollywood shots, I normally want those lights coming from the back to be really bright, and so that's why I want them to be brighter than the light hitting his face. After the shoot, I retouched this photo with Evoto, today's sponsor, and it only took me about three minutes to remove blemishes, reduce wrinkles, and eye bags. Remove red veins from his eyes, add contouring, and then remove flyaways. Click on the link in the description to try out the program and get a special offer from Avoto. So remember when I said earlier that there were optical snoots and snoot snoots? Well, I actually used both on this image. To set the mood for this environmental portrait, I started off with an optical snoot with a window blinds gobo inside about 3 meters or 10 feet from the model on camera left. Then I lit him from the right with a light with a 7 inch grid reflector and a 10 degree grid inside. Then to separate him from the background I put a 35 by 100 centimeter or 14 by 39 inch Rotolux strip softbox on a stand and had it peak above the backdrop. 
To finish off the look, I boomed a light with a snoot over the set and pointed it down at the table in order to simulate a pool of light coming from the desk lamp. Pablo, the stylist, got the idea that he would lean in and whisper in his ear, and I think that really made this moment and this image magical. I love using optical snoots to create a shaft of light on my subject's faces. This can be very dramatic and resembles light that we might encounter in the real world in a nightclub or in a dark room with small windows. In this example with Sophia, I started off with two Nanlite Pavotube version 2 30C lights over each shoulder to create edge lights. These RGB LED tubes can emit any color you choose, so I tuned mine to purple. I then lit her face with a Nanlite Forza 60C in a PJFMM36 optical snoot and I used its internal blades to shape the light. In order to create a gradient on the purple background, I placed a magenta gel on a 21 centimeter or 8.3 inch reflector and paired it with an Elenchrome 5. Rather than use the unit as a flash, I just powered on the 26 watt LED modeling lamp. Now I could have used a Nanlite in place of this flash, it really doesn't matter as long as it's a purple light back there that's on constantly. Near the end of the shoot, I also tried adding a homemade Kukuloris to block some of the light hitting her arm, but in the end, I chose the earlier frames. During the shoot with Chris, I used Elenchrome flash units. I lit them with a light motive 120, a 16 sided softbox, and I can never remember what that's called, so I'll put it down here on the left with a blue gel inside. And then I bounce that light off of a V flat on camera right to create a subtle edge light. Then I put a slit gobo in my nice photo SN29 and cover the lens with an orange gel. Now you might be wondering why I didn't use the blades on this unit and I used the slit gobo. Well, the reason why is this unit doesn't have blades. So I had to use the slit gobo and back then I didn't own the one with the blades, just in case you were wondering. To finish the look, I used a 35 by 100 centimeter, that's 14 by 39 inch Rotolux strip box on a boom as a hair light. When you're using a hair light on lightly colored hair, you only need a kiss of light. So this light was probably three to four stops darker than the light striking their face. During the shoot, I kept one hand on the camera and aimed the snoot with my other hand so the slit would always illuminate their left eye. You can also select your gobo based on your subject's styling. During this shoot with Becca, I decided to play off the 70s vibe of her outfit by selecting this swirl pattern gobo. I lit her face with an Elenchrome 5 in a silver maxi reflector with a blue gel, which is similar to a Pro Photo Magnum. To project the swirl pattern, I used the Nanlite Forza 60C in a PJ FMM 36 optical snoot. And the cool thing about this light is that you can dial it in to be any color that you like. To contrast with the blue light on her face, I chose to make this light red. The light blue background was also lit with blue light from the main light and while there were two large strip softboxes in the video, they weren't in use during this look. And in case it wasn't clear, I was mixing flash with LED in this look at the same time. The fourth way you can use these lights is to create shafts of light that are themselves visible in the images. During this shoot with Claude and Shamari, I wanted to create a high contrast film noir image. I lit them both with a 70 centimeter, 27.5 inch Elenchrome Rotolux softbox with the outer layer of diffusion removed, which made the light crisper than a normal softbox. And then I added a 35 by 100 centimeter, that's 14 by 39 inch, Rotolux strip softbox over each shoulder to create edge lights. And then I got a little lazy. 
rather than boom another strip softbox out there over the back of the set and point it towards the camera i just grabbed this light motive 120 giant softbox that i had in the back of the room and i hoisted it up there so that it was peeking over the top of the backdrop and i used that to light the top of claude's hat and shomari's hair now, this light is sort of skipping off the top there as if I were throwing a rock across a lake, um, which is okay. Uh, I'm getting away with it. Um, normally, I would have it coming in there at about 45 degrees, uh, which is more like throwing a rock into the lake. Um, and I guess this just goes to show that we all take shortcuts and uh, try to get away with it uh, whenever we can. Then to make it look like there was a shaft of light in my image creating the edge light on their neck, I placed a light in my nice photo SN29, inserted the slit gobo again, and aimed it towards the backdrop from the top right corner of the set. In retrospect, it might have been better if I defocused the lens a little more because I think it's a bit too sharp. I've also seen people use these snoots as an edge light in a smoke-filled room, but I've tended to shy away from this as it can be hard to get clear images in these conditions. But that said, whenever I use smoke, I tend to aim a fan that is barely running at my subject to try to keep it clear or keep the air clear between me and uh, between them and the lens. I know that filmmakers tend to use hazers rather than smoke machines in these situations, but their sheer cost has kept me from trying one out, but I really should put one on my watch list on eBay and see if something comes up. But please don't do that because then we'll be bidding against each other. After watching this video, I hope you'll consider adding an optical snoot to your lineup. They can be a great choice when trying to add a little variety to your work. However, I wouldn't suggest using them on every look. And when you do decide to use one, pause for just a second and ask yourself if you're really adding something positive to the image or just throwing some shade because you can. I see a lot of people using these kind of as a gimmick and it's not really artistically pleasing. So, you know, with everything, just use them in moderation. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those below. If you'd like to take your lighting to the next level, you could attend one of my in-person lighting workshops. And for more information on that, just go to johngress.com workshops. You can also learn more on my members only website, the Academy with John Gress, and you can find out that information and sign up for a three day free trial at johngress.com academy. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon.